Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and if not, well, maybe this will take your mind off it for the next 20 minutes, and welcome back to World of Warships, where we are about to enjoy another episode in the Game of Throws series. But which team is going to throw? Stick around and you'll find out. So this is Dartham in the USS North Carolina, Tier 8 US Navy battleship. He finds himself in a Tier 8 battle here on the Two Brothers map. The only real bad news here is that there is a carrier in play, but it's a tier 6 carrier and there are no submarines, so this is pretty good matchmaking. Before we get started, there are a couple of other players on the team that uh, you should be paying attention to. One is the Gajimada over there on the right hand side of the screen. Um, don't pay too much attention to the Farragut, who was briefly visible on the left hand side of the screen. He's one of those destroyer players who thinks that because his torpedoes only have a 5.5 or maybe he's using the upgraded torpedoes with a 6.4 kilometer range, doesn't really make that much difference, but he seems to believe that because his torpedoes have that range, he has to get to within that range of the entire enemy team as quickly as possible at the start of the match. So yeah, let's not worry too much about the Farragut. Honestly, he's not going to be much use to the team alive. Speaking of players who are not going to be much use to the team alive, the carrier on Darthen's team... Well, you won't believe it if I tell you, so you're just going to have to wait until you see it. And the final of a member of Darthen's team that we should be paying attention to... Um, who should be becoming visible very, very soon, as Darthen pops his spotter plane and lines up for some initial shots against the enemy Fuso over there. Oh, enemy carrier is all ready gate crashing the party but there is another battleship on Darthen's team the Atlantico who has an amazing game under circumstances where you would expect him to just crash and burn utterly and here he comes now this is a North American server replay so I'm pretty sure that guy is actually Brazilian based on his name and the fact that I don't think we ever actually see him say anything in chat, he's probably a Portuguese speaker who doesn't speak any English, but he's sailing an Atlantico, it's a Brazilian ship he has a Brazilian name, I'm fairly sure that he is actually Brazilian none of that's important of course, I just felt it was something interesting to point out Ooh, nice citadel there on the Fuso uh, what is important about the Atlantico player is how he is going to perform in the mid to late stages of this match Unfortunately, we're not going to see it happen directly, but, um, well, that's what the mini for. That guy's going to be really punching above his weight. Anyway, Darthen in the USS North Carolina. Oh, actually, before we start talking about the North Carolina, um, observe the Farragut. Yep, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> and, yeah, he's gone. Just because your torpedoes have a 5.4 or 5 kilometer range, whatever. Just because you have suicide torpedoes doesn't mean you're required to suicide right at the start of a battle, Farragut players. Learn to use islands. Anyway, the North Carolina. This is a good ship. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if for many US Navy battleship players, this was their favorite battleship. And there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, it has accurate 16-inch guns, but also, unlike every other American battleship that you've played up until this point, starting with the South Carolina at Tier 4, the New York at Tier 5. Although I kind of like the USS New York, even though I acknowledge it isn't particularly good, but there's just something about it. It's very maneuverable for a big, fat old battle wagon. The USS New Mexico at Tier 6, which is kind of bad. The USS Colorado at Tier 7, which isn't actually terrible, um, it's got great guns, but they're all as slow as one-legged dogs on tranquilizers. And then you get the Tier 8 and the USS North Carolina, and while it isn't a fast battleship by any stretch of the imagination, I mean, even with the speed flag equipped, it struggles to do 30 knots with the tailwind, but that's so much faster than everything else you've been forced to play up to this point. When you're in the North Carolina and you realise that your flank is about to fall and you need to get out of there, you can. <laughs> this is a, a new experience for US Navy battleship players. When you're in the North Carolina and you realise that the other flank is crumbling and you need to do something about it, 
you can. <laughs> it's not like the Colorado, the New Mexico, the New York and the South Carolina. And funnily enough, uh, the other line of US Navy battleships that were introduced that are just as slow, the Kansas, the Minnesota and the Vermont, where if you pick a flank to go to, that's pretty much the hill that you've chosen to die on because you're too slow to do anything else anywhere else. In the USS North Carolina, on the other hand, US Navy battleship captains are introduced for the first time to the dazzling world of being able to change their mind about which end of the map they want to be on. Is it any wonder that US Navy battleship captains get positively giddy with excitement when they finally unlock and start playing this ship? Oh, the Atlantico's just gotten his first kill. Got a detonation on one of the enemy destroyers, so that's nice. And the team could use a couple of kills because they're down three ships. And they're about to go down a fourth. Yep, the Edinburgh has just fallen victim to that lot. And this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about in the USS North Carolina. If you were in New Mexico or a Colorado, I mean, Darthan did react very early. You can see he's already turned around and heading in this direction because he knows this flank's about to fall. So even if he'd been in a Colorado or a New Mexico, he reacted early enough that he would probably still have been able to do something about it. And it's probably his experience in ships like the New Mexico and the Colorado leading up to unlocking the North Carolina that have enabled him to keep one eye on the minimap at all times and trying to predict where the developing threats are going to happen because he did react very, very quickly to this. But good minimap awareness like that is not a particularly common skill and it would not be at all surprising to see many other, well, not just American battleship players, but pretty much everybody not reacting to a developing threat like that until those ships had already cleaned up the rest of your team on that flank and were starting to shoot at you. Speaking of good awareness, the Gajimada, I don't know if you noticed, there it is. He's reacting to the developing threat there, posed by the Hatsuharu, and closing in to do something about it, as of course is Darthan, and they're not alone. Nice reactions to the threat posed by the enemy torpedo destroyer. The Gajimada is the one that gets the kill. And that's going to be all the more baffling later when you see what the Gajimada does. Although he does supply a reason for it. It's just a very bad reason. But enough spoilers about what the Gajimada is going to do. Don't worry, you'll know it when you see it. Either way, that was a very important kill. And the team were about to lose another destroyer. And go even further behind on points. Any second now. Yep, there goes the guider. That just leaves the Nagato as the sole surviving ship on this flank. And Darthan has arrived here at more or less... Well, it may still be too late. And if he could just get a bit more lucky with his shots on the Richie Lulu over there... The Nagato is... See, the Nagato needs to be able to turn because he's going to run into the map border. But if he turns that close to the Richelieu, he'll get his broadside hammered. So this needs to die. There it is. Right, that's taken some serious pressure off the Nagato. He now has a bit of room to manoeuvre. I mean, he's still going to have to turn and give broadside to some of those enemy ships, but, well, one of them is a cruiser and is unlikely to be able to citadel him. And the others are either now shooting at Darthan or they're far enough away that the Nagato has a fighting chance. Meanwhile, what's going on on the other flank? Well, they do still have a Normandy and that Atlantico. So they are holding their own for now, and the Gadiamada doesn't appear to be able to make his mind up which way he wants to go. And to be fair, I mean, things could go either way. It's here, however. Remember I said you had to pay attention to the carrier? Yes. You can see why. <laughs> Ranger, what the hell are you doing? You... Seriously, not joking, serious question. What the hell are you doing? Are you trying to sucker them into 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun range, is that it? <laughs> the enemy team has taken the lead. Because if that's your plan, it, it's working. Meanwhile, as Darthan lines up some shots on the Nuremberg over there, oh lovely, there's kill number two. The Normandy has gone down, which means on the other flank, if you look there at the minimap, the Atlantico is now all on his own against at least four enemies. In most other battles, that would be a death sentence for the Atlantico. 
And in most other battles where that Atlantico does not turn around and start retreating back to the north, that would be a guaranteed death sentence. But this guy apparently has something to prove. He's going for it. More on that as it develops. Meanwhile, the Ranger is unsurprisingly getting shot at by everybody who can see him. Which is good news for Darthan and the Nagato, I suppose. But I'm not entirely sure what the Ranger's plan is here. Is it, well, the closer I am to the enemies, the faster I can recycle attacks with my attack squadrons? And, well, yeah, that, that, that is true. But if that's your plan, you may as well not bother with your attack squadrons. Just have the pilots line up on the flight deck, give them rifles, and they'll soon be able to shoot at the enemy. You can do it, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea. So, well, with Darthan's team 200 points and two kills down, the Ranger is basically feeding them another kill. Some lovely hits there on the Kaikdwin, or however you pronounce the name of that Dutch ship, and the Gadjimada's committed to this flank as well. Which means that that Atlantico is well and truly on his own, and is suffering the undivided attentions of multiple enemy ships and the enemy carrier, and the Kaikdwin is border humping. What a scumbag. For those of you who don't realise why this is a scumbag move, basically the World of Warships target lock-on that provides a degree of aim assist when you are actually locked onto a target gets very confused when it's aiming at a ship that is half in and half out of the map. And, oh, I think, the, yeah, the Rangers finally realised why that is a really bad idea, but he's a day late and a dollar short and the team are about to go down. There it is. Yet another kill. Now, this border humping exploit, because that's what it is, has been in the game since day one and Wargaming continually refused to address it. Darthan gets lucky and finishes him off. Only a couple of hits were required when he was on that kind of low health. Um, they implemented what they call a fix for it by having your engine power reduce when you're on the map border. Which doesn't fix the problem because it's not that ships on the border were going too fast, it was that the aim assist from target lock didn't work against ships on the border. You can see a perfect example of the sort of thing that I'm talking about if you play operations on those maps where enemy ships arrive from outside of the border and sail into the map. You can lock onto them when they're outside of the border, but your shots always fall about a kilometre short. In order to hit them, you counterintuitively have to actually aim behind them in order to score hits on ships that you're locked onto. And that's what the border humping exploit does. It confuses the game's lock-on into not knowing precisely where the position is of the ship that you're locked onto and firing at. And don't expect a fix for that anytime soon. It's been in the game since launch. And as far as Wargaming are concerned, it's not a problem. Meanwhile, the Atlantico has managed to nail the enemy New Mexico. He's uh, on an absolute rampage down there to the southeast. And the Ranger did still have some aircraft up. And instead of using them wisely and spotting the enemy with them, he wasted them all against the Nagato down there. Because of course he did. Now... The friendly Nagato has managed to turn around and is a couple of kilometers to the northeast. So Darthan is not alone here. The Gadjimada is there as well, but he's launching torpedoes from too far away to actually threaten the Nagato. The Nagato is very wisely reversing for a couple of very good reasons. First, he doesn't want to get sunk by the Gadjimada's deepwater torpedoes. Also, oh, congratulations, Darthan, on the Confederate award. But also, he doesn't want to give a flat broadside to the North Carolina's 16-inch guns, and he's also kind of suckering Darthan into sailing into a crossfire between him and the Kansas. Now, Darthan does see this coming, but I think he wants to finish the Nagato off so he can turn to face the Kansas, who has an awful lot of health, and he took a big old chunk of armor-piercing damage there from the Nagato's 16-inch guns. But the Kansas, who is probably not that Nagato's favourite teammate right now, should have been sailing to the left in order to get a crossfire on Darthan and is instead cutting across his bows, so Darthan's guns can now point at both of them. And it's here where Darthan realises exactly what the Kansas is trying to do. He's going for a ram. <laughs> and, um, well, missed me. <laughs> And Darthan did just clean up kill number four on the Nagato. So, yeah, 
I mean, you know, to be fair, it is a Kansas. He has to get this close to anything to be able to hit them with his guns. I mean, the Kansas famously couldn't hit the side of a barn from the inside. Although he can hit the side of a Nagato from the inside of a very, very, very big barn. Especially when the Nagato is on less than a thousand health. Yay, the Kansas got a kill. <laughs> it's... I mean, it's to be expected. When you're sailing a ship with guns as bad as that thing, even when you're on 50,000 health, if you see a target on 30,000 health and you can go for a ram, that's probably the only 30,000 damage you're going to do in the entire battle. <laughs> so... <laughs> you can kind of understand the Kansas' decision-making here. Um, it wasn't a completely terrible decision when you take into consideration what ship he's sailing. So, fair enough. We'll let him have that one. And yes, yes, I know, that's actually the Kansas' second kill. I'm aware of that. He didn't actually shoot anything, though. Somebody died and left him a kill in their will. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's a good idea. Yes, Kansas, you turn around and give flat broadside at this range to a North Carolina 16-inch armor-piercing shell. And on any other day, that would have been a Kraken Unleashed rather than a high caliber. The Atlantico has just nailed the Fuso, by the way, down to the south and is in the enemy cap, and the Gadjimada is the one that cleans up the kill on the Kansas with his deep water torpedoes. Well done, I told you you had to watch out for that Atlantico. And he's probably on extremely low health now and looking for something to ram. Uh, can we actually see his health bar? Oh, well, yeah, we can't now. The enemy carrier took him out. The Atlantico went down swinging. And thanks largely to that rock star Atlantico and Dothan here in the USS North Carolina, with three minutes to go, the team are precisely four points ahead. And remember, even when the clock updates and the enemy team gain three points, Dothan's team are still one point ahead, and one point is all you need. Now, there is a carrier and a cruiser in play, and unfortunately the cruiser is the Japanese hybrid cruiser, the Tona, and it also has aircraft, and Dothan cannot hide from them, but he's big and tough, and he can tank their damage. The Gajimada, on the other hand, cannot tank their damage, but he is stealthy and fast, and he can run and hide. So all they have to do is stay alive for the next three minutes, and they've won. And it's here where the Gajimada, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the conversation in chat, stay alive for three minutes, run out the clock and we win. The Gajimada says, nope, I need another 4,000 damage. So for the sake of some personal mission, in order to get another 4,000 damage, the Gajimada in a destroyer on low health, Dot's going after two ships that can both strike him from across the map and spot him from across the map with aircraft. Of course, one of them's a heavy cruiser. Oh, and he's shooting at him too. Probably trying for a fire. The Tona is having none of that shit, thank you very much. And so the Gadjimada tries and fails to get a personal mission completed and succeeds only in throwing the match, putting the enemy team ahead on points with less than two minutes to go. Which means that Darthen now needs to get a kill in order to win. He can't just run out the clock and take the points victory, because the Gadjimada threw it away. And he's facing two enemies that both have aircraft that he cannot hide from, that can strike him from across the map with impunity, and are both faster than him. And if have any sense whatsoever, we'll be turning around and taking Billy Big Steps in the other direction in order for them to run out the clock and take the win on points. While, simultaneously, with complete impunity, striking him from the air, and potentially also securing the last kill. And the Vessa, because unlike the Ranger, is not a complete mouth-breathing idiot, is doing exactly that. Here come his torpedo attack planes. Oh, they've dropped. Wait, they dropped awfully close. Yep, the torpedoes didn't have time to arm, and there's the Vessa. And he is turning around and running, but Dothan's got his spotter plane up, and he sees him, and that's pretty much as flat a broadside as you're ever going to get. Shots out. Come on, baby. Daddy needs... Oh, you've got to be kidding. Oh, hang on a second. Tona has torpedoes, doesn't it? 
turn to the left, turn to the left, turn to the left. There he is, he's turning to the left. He's trying to keep the island between himself and any torpedoes that the toner may have launched. He's only going to get one more chance to sink the Vessa, who appears to be trying to throttle Duke and suddenly reverse the other way, which only succeeds in making him a very slow-moving target. There are the toner's torpedoes. Come on, baby, you've got to kill him now. You won't get another chance to reload. He's got him. There's the Kraken unleash. The team are ahead on points. He just has to stay alive for another few seconds. The toner's turning around, trying to get the torpedoes away from the other side. Dothan isn't falling for that old gag. He's turning in, keeping the island between himself. The toner has no chance. The clock runs out. Dothan snatches victory from the jaws of defeat. Despite the Ranger and the Gadjimada's best efforts to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, he and the rock star in the Atlantico, the Brazilian player down to the southeastern end of the map between them, dragged that team kicking and screaming over the finish line. My warmest congratulations to both of them. Thoroughly well-deserved victory, and I hope you all enjoyed watching it. I also hope none of you suffered any fatal heart seizures when you saw what the Ranger and the Gadjimoto were doing. Because that's it for today. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.